Hello everybody, this is Russ Bucher from Control My Nikon and welcome to the focus stacking tutorial. A focus stacking is very useful for combining images that have a limited depth of field to give a resulting image with a much larger depth of field. And we're going to take a look at how we can capture that series of images in Control My Nikon and then send it out for processing in an external application. First thing we need to do is turn on live view. So I have a D7000 with a 105 millimeter macro lens. It's going to be pointed at the center of a flower and this flower has about an inch and a half of depth of field. I'll turn on live view and here's my flower. Now initially when I look at this I also have the histogram up and I can see that just too bright here so I'm going to increase my shutter speed and we'll bring it down to an acceptable brightness. Let's give this a try. We can see that there's nothing blown out, there's nothing as pure black, the red and the green channels aren't blown out, but the blue is off a little bit in the dark and, and that shouldn't be a problem. Here is the focus stacking window and you can find it right here under tools. This window allows us to configure the step and the slices and delay in milliseconds between shots that we take. Now right now we have continuous lighting set up but you can also take these shots easily by using strobes and flashes and that delay will help those strobes recharge if necessary between shots. There's also an option here to export it to Zareen Stacker. The Zareen Stacker is a software package that will accept your captured stacked images and blend them all together so they have a large depth of field. Now I'm also going to bring up the image viewer and I'm just going to take a test shot of this composition with this exposure. And currently I'm shooting in RAW. I'm just going to shoot here in JPEG fine. And I'm going to save that on my profile. And I'm going to save it to a new profile. I'm not too sure what the name of this flower is, so I'm just going to call it the yellow thing. So I think the exposure is okay here, but as you can see in this image, you know, there is a lot of depth of field, and we've captured very little of it. There's not very much here that's in focus. And if I use my focus pad, I can explore the depth of field. So I'm just going to left click and drag in the focus pad. So I'm just going to left click and drag in the focus pad. And you can see the end of these flower petals come very close to the camera. Just drag the mouse on the focus pad. You can see how much depth of field is here. And currently, we're using f8 as our aperture, which is optimum sharpness for this particular lens. So what we need to do is capture a series of images that start at the nearest point that we want to focus, which is right about here, and then continues all the way into the depth of the flower, ending right about here. So essentially, we're going to take some slices. It's almost like an MRI where we're going to take a series of images with varying focus. So uh, first thing we need to do is bring the camera into focus for the nearest part. And uh, let's try it right here. I'm just going to turn off my thirds and my focus box here. So let's look at this. This looks like it's the closest. Maybe this one. Now you don't have to start perfectly in focus, you can miss it a little bit and that's okay. We're just going to take a guess of how much we need to move the focus between each slice. So, I'm using my keyboard shortcuts here to adjust the focus pad. If my first image is here, my next image is here, next image is here, 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 here. You can see it's going to be a lot of images, but as we take them, we're covering the entire depth of field of this flower. And 
And so we probably stop right about here. Right there. So let's go back to the beginning. And now we're going to count. So I'm going to press the arrow on the keyboard that will move the focus further away and count how many times I press that key. So if we start right here, okay, there's our starting point. So I'll start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, I need 32 slices of step 52 to cover the depth of field. So I'll go in here and I'll say that my step is 52 slices, 32, delay. And now I'm not using flash here, so I really don't need a delay. I'll just put it down to 50. And I want to export it to Zareen Stacker uh, when I'm done. But we we'll need to ensure that we specified where Zareen Stacker is, and we could specify the path here. So if you click on Browse, so this is the executable we want to run. Okay, so let's back up our focus to the beginning point. Should start right about here. And I'll press the preview button and it's going to simulate the focus stack capture. And you'll see that the focus changes as we go. So we'll start previewing. It shows the stack number. Okay, and now it should come back to where we started. Let's try it again. Preview, going through all the slices. And come back. Okay, well, let's give this a try then. We're going to capture the images, and once they've all been captured, they'll be exported to Zareen Stacker. So I just press the capture button and wait. Now you'll notice as it's capturing, a little bit slower than doing the preview because it needs to transfer each one of those images to your computer. But we could see that the focus is slowly changing. And when we're done, we should see this area just slightly out of focus. We've covered the entire focus range. This is still pretty sharp. Three images to go. There are two. There we go. So now there's really nothing sharp left here and in focus. So we have covered the entire depth of field range. The Zareen Stacker makes creating the final output image from your stack very easy to do. So all you need to do is capture your images like we already have. And it shows you the list of all the captured images. And you can click on each one and it'll show it to you here. So you can see as we go further down the list, the focus went further down into the flower. Okay, if we go up to stack and just uh, tell it to align and stack with Pmax. Now there's some different options here and there's um, a lot of capability in this program but as a good starting point, just try the Pmax and we'll just let it go. And here you can see it is building the final image it's basically taking the parts of each one of your source images that is in focus and putting those together. So everything should be in focus in the resulting image. Now you can see this image on the right hand side where it's been building this composite image where it's taken the in focus parts of each one of those captured images and it's just putting it all together. It just needs to do the center part here. And you can see there's not too many images left, but this looks very in focus now from the tips of these petals all the way down to the center. And remember at F8, this was not possible to do 
it would only get a very small amount in focus at one time. And there we go, there is the output image. Pretty darn impressive. Now from here you could save this image, go further into another image editing program like Photoshop. You could sharpen it, tweak the color, whatever you like. Now you have an image that's completely in focus. And if we were to compare this with what we saw on Live View, I'm just going to go say to a midpoint here. You know, this is about how much we can get in the focus. And here's the finished image. Now let's take a look where the captured images were stored on your hard drive. The images are always stored by whatever you specify here on your current profile. And if I look over here, this is the path. But when I capture a sequence of images during a focus stacking session, they will be saved to a new subfolder of the C images path. So let's take a look at what was saved. Here's the folder right here, and it just always starts with the word stack, then underscore, and then basically the date and time, the year, month, day, and it goes right down to the millisecond here. Here's a list of all the images, and right now these are date stamped, and the purpose uh, of the date stamp is to ensure that they're always sequential. So a lot of these programs that are going to import these images need to get the sense of the sequence, the correct sequence and uh, it could read these file names and see that the numbers are always increasing and know that this is the first one, the very top here, and this is the last one. Now there's other ways to label those images and one of the ways here is specified in the help. There is a file name token called at session counter one. If you were to go here under file name, instead of add date time one, go add session counter one. This will now start at zero and count upwards during your live view focus stacking capture. So if you start another capture session, it's going to start at zero. So it's really up to you whether you want to use a date time or a session counter. So that's how you capture a focus stack in Control Man Icon. Happy tethering.